Uh, welcome uh, to the session on uh, computing software laboratory. Now in this particular laboratory, uh, we will be solving uh, several problems using some of the recent softwares. More specifically, we will be using uh, softwares like MATLAB for the generation of different waveforms and the verification of several properties. And then uh, we will move to the PSPY software for the design of some analog circuits and the verification of its output for a given input. Now in this session, uh, I will uh, demonstrate uh, how to use the software, MATLAB software uh, for the generation of some uh, periodic and aperiodic discrete time signals. Now, as we know, uh, the MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. So, this software is being provided by MathWorks and everything what we do in MATLAB is very much related to the matrix operation. So, if you know how to build a matrix, how to operate with the matrix, then writing programs in MATLAB would be easier for you. Now, in this particular session, we will be generating different types of signals, maybe periodic or sometimes aperiodic signals as well. Now, to start with, let us consider the generation of discrete time signals only. Now, as you know, MATLAB deals with matrix in general. That means the elements what we have in this particular software, they are finite in nature. So, it is difficult for you to generate some continuously varying signal using this particular software. However, we will also emphasize how can we generate some continuous time waveform using this particular software. Now, as the first assignment, uh, let me just uh, show you how to use this particular software for the generation of some of our very familiar signals. Now, this is the MATLAB R2014 version. Now, you can uh, write down your program either in the command window over here. You can write something. For example, as I am writing over here, x is equal to 5. And then the semicolon. And say y equal to 3. And say z is equal to x plus y. And then if I want to print Z, it is coming like that. So very fundamental program is addition of two numbers. Now what you can do is you can write down the programs here in the command window itself. Uh, but the problem in writing programs in command window is that you cannot store the written program over here in the command window. So that's why it is preferable that uh, you go and create a new file, a new M file, just by clicking on the new tab and script, then this particular window will come. You can also save this after you write some program. Now as a first experiment, uh, we are trying to generate impulse function using MATLAB. Now, you know, impulse is a particular type of function which will exist only for n is equal to 0 and the value of this impulse function for n not equal to 0 is equal to 0. So, that is all about the impulse function. So, to generate the impulse function, first of all, you need to know what about the length of the signal and what will be the amplitude of the signal. You can have an unit amplitude impulse signal or you can have impulse signal of some given amplitude. So, let us assume that the amplitude value is given by A 
and that is equal to given by pi. So a is equal to 5. So I am storing the variable 5, the number 5 inside the variable a. And if I put this semicolon, that means it will not be printed whenever I am going to run this program. Then comes the length of the signal. Let us assume uh, we are using a variable say capital N to dictate the length and that is given by say 20. Now in order to generate the impulse function we will take the help of to inbuilt function which is already there in MATLAB. Now the function here for the generation of the impulse function is zeros z e r o s so whenever i use the function zeros it will generate a matrix of given size for example if i consider a situation like this let us uh, try to represent the impulse function within the variable i m. Now within this, I would like to represent the impulse function. Now this has been represented by using a third bracket like this. So initially I will start with writing zeros, z e r o s. And since we are dealing with the one dimensional signal, so the corresponding argument inside the function zeros would be 1, comma, capital N. So capital N here dictates the length to certain extent. The length is not equal to capital N, but length can be represented as a function of capital N. So initially I will be having n number of zeros. So whenever I write this particular code zeros 1 comma n, it will generate a matrix of dimension 1 comma n. That means one row and n column. And then I have to provide the corresponding value at n is equal to 0. You know at n is equal to at small n equal to 0, the impulse function will be having its value and that value is given by say capital A. So after writing the zeros 1 comma n, what I can do is I can write capital A. So we are appending the values. So capital A is a scalar quantity of size 1 cross 1. So I can append. 1 cross n, 1 comma n, then I can append this a and then another zeros, z e r o s, this function I am using 1 comma n and I need to end the third bracket with a semicolon. So this particular line in is equal to zeros 1 comma n, a zeros 1 comma n generates a string of numbers. How many such numbers? We have 2n plus 1 values. First n values will be 0, then you have a and then you have another n zeros. And I need to plot it. Now in order to plot, first of all, I need to identify a running variable. Let the running variable be represented by small n. So I'm writing like this. So I am creating a another vector which ranges from minus n to plus n with an increment of 1. So that is the structure. Whenever I create something minus n colon 1 colon n, it will generate a vector whose minimum value is minus n and maximum value is plus n and the increment is 1. 
so that will generate the independent variable with respect to which I am going to plot the impulse function and I need to plot it so for that I am using the term stem so stem is the command which is used to plot the discrete values like this once again you have two arguments one is the first one will be the independent variable that is small n and second one would be the dependent variable that is m over and then in order to visualize it in a better way I have to use grid on that's all now I am going to save this one let it be saved like uh, experiment 1 let me write like this experiment 1 so it is saved and then I am going to run the program so let me run it and you are getting a graph like this as you can observe if you closely observe from minus 20 to minus 1 all these values are equal to 0 and from plus 1 to plus 20 all the values are equal to 0 and at n is equal to 0 this value is becoming plus 5 so that will generate one scaled impulse function now let me move to the generation of the next waveform and let me consider this waveform be a step function so there will be only one change so in the step function what I can do is uh, I can use the term say st st for step so only one change you can find over here for the generation of the step function initially you have n number of zeros so zeros 1 comma n and then you have n plus 1 number of 1's if you have scaled step function then it should be multiplied with a otherwise simple 1's how many such 1's n plus 1 number of 1's so I can write 1's so this particular function 1's will generate n plus 1 number of 1's let me complete and if you want to have some scaled step function then it should be multiplied with this capital A so what I can do is I can also multiply this with A star star is the corresponding symbol for multiplication in MATLAB that's over now once again what I can do is I have to identify the running variable which is running from minus n to plus n like this and then I have to plot so in order to plot I am using the same command stem n comma st st stands for the corresponding variable within which the values pertaining with the step function has been stored now you see in a single program I have written the codes for two different waveforms first one is for the impulse function and the second one is for the step function so how can I have a situation in which both of these two graphs can be seen on a same page now in order to do that I have to take the help of another command in MATLAB which is known as the subplot 
and this command is used just before the stem command. Now in this particular experiment, we will be developing four different waveforms. So it will be better to divide the screen into grids having two rows and two columns. So then the command will be something like that. Let me just change the first program a little bit. Before the stem, I am using the command subplot. The command is subplot. How many rows do we want to have? Two rows. How many columns do we want to have? Two columns. So two comma two. And this particular output because of the execution of stem n comma i m will be plotted in the first row first column. So that's why 2 comma 2 comma 1. So I'm making this change over here. Similarly, for this one, I have to use like subplot 2 comma 2 comma 2. That means a grid has been created and we have all together four different places because two rows and two columns. And the first one is placed, first waveform is placed in the first row first column and the second waveform is placed in the first row second column. And then we have the grid on. Once we have the grid on, uh, then uh, this entire screen has been divided into the corresponding marking. So once I do that and once again if we run the program, let me check what we are getting. We are getting the output uh, waveform like this. Initially, this particular figure was there in the inside in the entire screen, and now uh, the screen has been divided into four different slots. This is the first slot where the impulse function has been shown. This is the second slot where the step function has been shown, and as you can see from this particular demonstration, uh, that uh, for n is equal to minus 20 to minus 1, the value is 0 and for n greater than or equal to 0, the value moves from 0 to 5. Now with this understanding, now let us move to the design of another uh, aperiodic waveform and let this waveform uh, is nothing but a RAM function. So for the RAM function, let me use the term RM. So it stands for the RAM function. So you can use the different variable as well. So it is up to you. So let us assume that from 0 onwards, the corresponding signal will start increasing. So initially you have n number of zeros. If I want to have the variation from the negative n values as well. So initially you have n zeros, so zeros 1 comma n and then you have the variation of the input waveform depending upon the value of small n. So what I can do is I can generate a vector like this. So this will generate a vector as I've already seen minus n colon 1 colon n will generate a vector whose first value is equal to minus n and the last value is equal to plus n and the increment is 1. The default increment is 1. If you do not specify anything, then it will be 1. So now uh, let us specify this one like this 0 colon n. So that will generate one vector whose Starting value is 0 and the end value is n. So how many such elements will be generated? Altogether n plus 1 number of elements. And if you would like to multiply them by means of factor, that you can also do by multiplying this entire vector with this capital A. Remember, uh, this particular software MATLAB is not at all case insensitive. Rather, it is case sensitive. So if you write capital A and if you write small a, so these two are different, okay? And let me complete this one. 
with a semicolon. Once again, uh, I need to have the variation of n. I need to specify the uh, variation of the running variable. Once again, it will be from minus n to plus n, like this. And then uh, a subplot 2, 2, 3. And then stem n comma rm and then ultimately grid on let us check let me save and run now you can see this waveform has been generated so you have in the third position in the third slot you have this ram function a triangular function which starts from 0 at n is equal to 0, the value is equal to 0. At n is equal to 1, the value is equal to 5. At n is equal to 2, the value is equal to 10. And accordingly, at n is equal to 20, the value is equal to 100. Because you have used a scaling factor of 5. So you can also tune the scaling factor as per your requirement. Now let me move to the generation of a periodic waveform. So, so far we have uh, discussed about how to generate some aperiodic waveform like uh, Nimpulse function, step function, ramp function, then how can generate some periodic waveform using this particular software. Now let us take uh, for example the generation of a short tooth waveform which is nothing but the periodic repetition of the ramp function. So to generate the short tooth, uh, let me use the term, uh, let me the variable uh, be called like SW. So this is the variable. So initial n samples will be 0. So I can take the help of this zeros 1 comma n that will generate the initial n samples all of whose values equal to 0. Then comes a variation. Then the signal cannot increase indefinitely from 0 onwards. So I have to specify certain period. So to identify let me just uh, call the period is given by P and that I have to specify before the description of this particular variable SW. So what I can do is I can go back to the previous line and now I have to identify the period. Let the period be represented by you can also call it period or you can also call it the weight of the short tooth. Let me assume that the short tooth will have a variation from say 0 to 5, it will increase and then when the value of n is equal to 6, then once again it comes back to 0. So in that case, the period or the width of the short tooth is given by 6. So I am taking the value of 6 as an example. So p is equal to 6, that has been specified. Initial n values are 0, the negative values are equal to 0. Negative values uh, means uh, the values corresponding to the negative arguments. Then I have to take the help of another function uh, available in MATLAB which is called the mod function. So this mod function, what does it do is it will give you the residual. So it will be something like that. You just write it down like this mod. Then I have to specify the variables over which uh, this operation will be modulo to operation modulo operation will be uh, carried out so this is 0 colon n so that is the variable yeah i have to put the third bracket not the bricks and then i have to specify the corresponding factor so the factor is P. So if I consider from 0 to 5, the value inside this vector will be replicated as it is. But when the value becomes 6, then this particular function will return 0. So it will be simply P. And then it is over. 
have to uh, close the first bracket first and then the third bracket. So you have to be very careful while uh, writing programs in MATLAB, the beginning and the end of these uh, brackets, the first bracket and the third bracket, they're very crucial. And if you would like to have some magnification factor, you can also specify like this. So it is done. Then once again, I have to write down the same thing. The variation of the independent variable and this time the subplot 2, 2, 4 followed by stem n, sw. and it ends with grid on. So now if I run the program, it looks something like that. Now you see from 0 to 5, it increases and then once again, when the value of n is equal to 6, then it comes back to 0. Then once again, it starts increasing and when the value of n is equal to 12, it comes back to 0 and something like this is repeated for the entire duration. Now you can increase the length accordingly to have a more number of the cycles. So these four fundamental programs will give you some insight on how to design codes or how to write programs using MATLAB. Now you, you can also have certain ornamentation on the available figures that you have already seen. We can also insert some commands like we can use the command like x level. So whenever we write x level, this will allow you to input your own message. So I can write like samples or time samples. Let me write like time samples. X level time samples and Y level say scaled impulse. So this one is common. So what I can do is I can copy this one everywhere. And the Y level is different. For the first one is scaled impulse. For the second one it is scaled step. Whatever uh, you would like to have you can put it down and then the scaled ram it will be scaled ram and then ultimately scaled short width short width. So now if you run this program what you can see here now you have the corresponding I mean uh, if I just uh, observe it here this indication has been represented in the x-axis as well as in the y-axis. So in the first diagram you see here time samples has been written over there. Time samples everywhere in all the four figures and the scaled impulse, scaled step, scaled ram, scaled short tooth. So now you can mark the different axis just by simply writing the programs. Otherwise you can also do the same thing just by clicking on the figure itself and going to the figure properties and access properties that can be done 
from outside otherwise just by writing programs also you can identify the level of the x axis and the level of the y axis accordingly so uh, with this uh, uh, basic introduction uh, i would like to conclude this session of matlab programming